Thanks for listening to the People Not Titles podcast. We are brought to you by our great sponsors, Land Trust Title Services, your partners for results. Hello, this is Steve Kempf with the People Not Titles podcast, and I'm here with my good friend and uh, entrepreneur and much more, um, John Michael McMahon. So, John, thank you for being on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for I'm having me. I'm excited to uh, talk to you. Me too. So, uh, John and I uh, first uh, got into relationship, was it in 2019? 2017. Oh, I 2017. Think. Yeah. Okay, great. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> so, John was, uh, John was applying for a mortgage position. And John was also an author, uh, or actually you, you authored several books first off. Uh, that's what I think our first dialogue was because I was uh, starting to, I was writing a book at the time. Right. And um, so talk a little bit about, uh, John Michael, about your uh, history with, in the book business. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I, uh, I was, uh, got really into entrepreneurship in college mm -hmm. and my first game. Why? Was, well, um, I really liked the idea of, uh, freedom, uh, you know, uh, freedom of time and kind of being your own boss. Um, but uh, I, I was almost a little bit uh, misguided in the first place, a little, um, a little naive to the reality of how all of that would work. But I was very uh, money driven and very uh, freedom driven when I was in my kind of late teens. Okay. And what, what do you think in, uh, instilled that in you? So you went to, what, what was your motivation for going to college? Just like some, that's something I have to do. You know, um, yes, I, I actually had no motivation, uh, for college. It's just what everybody did. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, uh, I, um, I think I would have been better off maybe going to a community college and maybe giving it more of a part-time focus at, at that point in my life. Just, okay. I just wasn't ready. Where'd you go? Hope college okay. in uh, Michigan. Yep. And, uh, you know, looking back, I, I would have told my younger self to go full throttle with school. But at that time in my life, it wasn't a priority. So I think I would have been better suited at a community college and did maybe more of a part time feel and got some credits under my belt. But I was very driven by entrepreneurship at that time. And was there anything, any inspiration that you've seen in life, parents, uh, friends, um, whatever that has said, Hey, that's, I think the path for me. Yeah. You know, um, you know, obviously my mom and Keith are both, yep. um, real estate agents and they kind of always had a entrepreneur uh, background. So I think that's what exposed me to it. And how long has your mom been a realtor? Edie, Edie yeah. McMahon. Uh, oh, I think a, a little over 20 years now. Maybe okay. Even. So you, at, while you were growing up, you've seen your mom hustle, right? Yeah. yeah. And she, she hustled and same with Keith, but, um, the thing that uh, I should have done, which they both did, was they uh, they had gone to school. My mom went to school for accounting. Keith went to school for business. And they kind of built that foundation before they had launched into entrepreneurship. And I just thought... Um, Screw it. I'm going to become an entrepreneur. Right. So yeah. I kind of skipped some steps. And I think I was like very naive to the reality of how much it takes to actually be successful in business or as an entrepreneur. So... I thought I had all the answers and then kind of learned the hard way that, you know, this is, this is a lot tougher than just saying you want to do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so while people are smoking weed, drinking beer, or just playing video games or whatever in college, you, uh, after class is done, you start uh, exploring what it's like to be an entrepreneur and you start thinking about what different kind of businesses. So take us through that kind of journey. Sure. So, um, yeah, I, I, was, uh, I was not doing my schoolwork. A lot of the time I was on YouTube looking up ways how to make money. Okay. So my first stint with entrepreneurship was I would go to Goodwill and I would go through the clothing section and find designer clothes that were, you know, being sold for like four or five bucks a piece. Then I would go on, on eBay, uh, you know, turn it around and flip it. And, you know, after all the eBay fees and PayPal fees and shipping fees are done, you know, you make a few bucks here, but I, I was real excited about that. And I did that for maybe a year or two. Okay. And so for your first year of flipping, <laughs> instead of flipping houses, you're flipping uh, pants and shirts. Yeah, yeah. Your first year of flipping, um, what, what, what was the net income? You know, I made a few 
I made maybe like fourteen hundred bucks a month. Okay, something wow, like that's that. that's. Yeah. I mean, people are slinging sub sandwiches or right. burgers or whatever. Fourteen hundred bucks. I'm shocked. I thought you were gonna say fourteen hundred a year. Yeah, it was. It was. That's amazing, actually. Yeah, on months where I was really motivated, I was able to to do that. But you know, to a college kid, that's a lot of money because you don't have any expenses. And, and how much time did you spend on that? Um, I was pretty devoted to it. I would say. Um, Maybe like 20 or 30 hours a week. And yeah. was it like a real buzz when you found like a cherry piece article of clothing and were like, oh, I know this is going to yeah, be. Yeah. What's that, your biggest sale? Like what was your best find in that? Uh, I found a Versace suit once and I think that sold for maybe a couple hundred. Wow. And, and how much did you buy it for? Uh, maybe 15 bucks because it was okay. a full suit and that's yeah. a lot for even a Goodwill. Yeah. But And then there was another big brand called Robert Graham and that's kind of what the... Uh, the big dogs would wear, you know, maybe like your your um, retired finance guys and okay. stuff like that. And they they kind of have like the paisley and floral designs that kind of let let people know you're doing well. So if you found one of those, that, that was, was always, like that was like a home run. And I found a couple of those too. And did you go to the same Goodwills all the time? You know, uh, I would try to switch it up just because I, if I hit it a few days before, I might have taken up all the good inventory. And you know, a hundred other people were doing it too. So, no kidding. So I would go to like St. Charles, Geneva, um, Bolingbroke. This is a pretty good area for that. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're right. I would try to go to um, wealthier towns like uh, Willowbrook and Naperville. Okay. And, and stuff like that. And then when I was in college, I went to a few in Holland, and there wasn't as big of a selection there. But wow, yeah, yeah that was my that was my first go at entrepreneur. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So did you graduate college? John I'm, I'm actually uh, in my senior year right now. I just started last week. Okay. So I'm finishing up my degree. Uh, I'll, I'll graduate this June. Okay. So yeah. I, so did you just leave Hope College? Like, was it you didn't have much hope anymore? Yeah. For hope? Yeah. I uh, I left halfway through my sophomore year. I think I had flunked a class or two. I just didn't care at this okay. point. I was all in on being an entrepreneur. And what did your parents have to say about that? You know, uh, my mom um, was was uh, pretty supportive, actually. You know, she she had a lot of faith in me. And um, looking back, she was very patient on me. And so was my dad, too. They were they were actually both very patient with me and kind of let me explore that and, and figure it out on my own. Um, so... Yeah, they were they were very uh, they were very gracious with me. Wow, and that's really yeah. that's really helpful, right? That's a yeah. key thing to know that while you're trying to find yourself, uh, that they saw uh, some of the some of the uh, earmarks for a successful person as opposed to a failure, uh, flopped out of college type right. of thing. That wasn't your story that right. you were telling yourself. Yeah, I I, um, I think um, they they definitely could have been harsher, but they they. They saw how motivated I was, so I think they thought I had a shot. It wasn't just like, you know, some kid saying I'm going to do this, and the parents saying, you know, no, 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 don't try that. They they let me, they let me uh, kind of spread my wings with that a little bit. You know? Okay, so you get home uh, from college. Are you still doing good? Well, no. Okay. Um, um, then I I shift to uh, Amazon Publishing. So the same guys that that I would watch on YouTube that that got me uh, into flipping clothes on. Uh, on eBay were um, pushing this business for publishing on Amazon. So Amazon okay. had this program where any regular Joe could publish a book on uh, Amazon on their on their Kindle uh, catalog. So what I started doing was hiring ghostwriters in, um, on freelance websites. And I would say, hey, write a book on this topic. And then I would get a graphic designer to do the cover. And after I had the cover and the uh, content, I would post it onto Amazon. And if I could get some reviews and um, some clicks, you know, Amazon would start pushing it higher into their ranks. And after um, about like six months, I kind of had a stream of income coming from that. So I shifted from clothing to uh, Amazon publishing at that point. Okay. Yeah. And let's talk about how long did you do that, John Michael? Um, you know, it lasted probably six years altogether. It was yeah. it was part time a lot of the time. You know, I was doing yeah. jobs. Yeah. At, at uh, you know, key mortgage and jobs at State Farm and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So it was uh, it was a very passive income. It was nice. Yeah. But it had some really successful months. Yeah. Let's and, talk about that. What was yeah. your? But what was the greatest success that you had there? Um, oh, yeah. oh, first off, when did it? How long did it take you from the time that you said I'm going to be one, uh, Amazon publisher to the time you made your first dollar? How quick out of the gate was that? Yeah. Um, I probably made the first dollar within the first two months. Okay. But I wasn't making serious money until like six months into the. Uh, business, so it was just like any business. You yep. know, you have to put the time in before 
the money starts coming through. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, though. Yes, exactly. They just want the money before the time. Yeah, exactly. I think that's why a lot of people uh, give up on being an entrepreneur because I, I think the average business takes five years to be profitable. Okay. So um, this one, though, it was, uh, you know, it was, uh, you didn't, there wasn't as much of a barrier to enter, so it didn't take as long to, uh, to start being profitable. But about six months in, I started seeing some money and I said I could really scale this if I start hiring more ghostwriters, start hiring more um, graphic designers, I could get two or three books up mm -hmm. a week or a month and uh, you know if one of them catches fire then you know that'll that'll sell for months and months, yeah. Okay, so during that period of time what were, what was the largest number of books that you had at the at the same time? I think maybe about 50 was when it was at its peak, 50 or 60. And on maybe some of the best months, I was doing like 9000 in revenue um, just from people, you know, buying these $2, $3 ebooks. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. And, what, and the books were, on, was it anime? Um, yes, yeah, some were, some were uh, anime. And that's, that's where I learned about copyright, actually. Okay. You learn about uh, some things you don't know when you're 19 about yeah. some aspects of business. Then some were on how-tos, like how to prevent... Uh, you know, how to prevent hair loss, how to stay out of debt, uh, you know, the ultimate guide. I might to... want to hit you up on the hair loss one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, so, uh, um, you know, and then these, these ghostwriters would do all the research on the topic. I would put it up. And uh, so it was kind of those two topics. It was like uh, anime, video game characters, and, and how-tos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. And so at what point did you just, and that, that's when you and I met. Right. And it was interesting that I was going through the journey of writing my book and, or finishing the, the writing of it and really, and then you and your mom and started to read it and give me a lot of great feedback. And that's how the end of that, uh, and the, the book was really about my spiritual journey, but it was great to be able to connect with you on that. So, and you and I started talking when we were going to the bathroom. I was like, hey, John, Michael, what do you got going? Yeah. Um, so, uh, what, at what point are you doing any, are you, are any of those books up right now? Or is there any, are you making any money doing that anymore? No, I, through like 2020, I was, I think that was the last, last year that I had any money coming through it, but I took it down. There were some copyright things and Amazon was saying, Hey, you know, all these books have some issues. And by that point, um, it was barely profitable anymore. So I said, you know, I don't want the risk a headache of, or a hassle. It, exactly. So I, I closed the whole thing down. Um, but yeah, I had six years of, of revenue and some months were certainly better than others, but, um, okay. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. And you learn a lot, right? You learn a lot about marketing, about managing people, uh, virtual people and about developing projects and yes. all these amazing things that, uh, you know, so. Right. Yeah. And Steve, I'm going to, I'm going to turn this off real quick. I got, I have a, a guy calling me. He's going to keep interrupting. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. So I'm sorry to pause that. No, we'll no, that no, up. no. It's all good. So, um, Okay. Yes. I learned, I learned a lot about business through this. you learn about forming an LLC. Yep. You learn about copyright issues. You learn about overhead. You learn about accounting. Mm -hmm. And had I considered all those things, I don't know if I would have started. Maybe I would have been more attracted to a, a nine to five corporate type job, but it was also good in a lot of ways too, because you understand how businesses operate and what it takes to get off the ground. So um, yeah, so it's not just the Ferrari parked in Greece and you're standing by it with uh, 20 girls around you. Exactly, yeah. It was it was a lot less uh, luxurious than that. You know, you, <laughs> you work twice as hard to make, you know, minimum wage. Yeah. And then... So you, it's interesting that you, that you say that, uh, John Michael, because you initially, the main motivation was freedom. Yes. Right? And it sounds to me like you you that what didn't sound it doesn't sound like freedom to me no. you know we're a guy who and i i'm not i'm not saying i'm, I'm an entrepreneur myself uh -huh. and i have a corporate gig but i would say there's a lot of freedom in a corporate gig if you're able to do well at it add value and not be so tied to all the machinations of it that you really don't want to be tied to right it, you know that's exactly it i i saw both sides of it because um on one hand, you know, you had I had all these uh, self-help gurus saying, "I work 80 hours a week, so I don't have to work 40 hours a week." <laughs> and so, you yeah, know, you hear little mantras yeah. like that. Yeah. And uh, I will say to it because I was really into the self-help scene yeah. at that time. There was a lot of really bad advice in there, and especially for an 18 or 19 year old kid who just wasn't uh, exposed to business. Um, 
So, you know, if I could go back in time and talk to myself, I would have said to, you know, finish the degree there and maybe work at a corporate job you like. And and I'm really not knocking entrepreneurship yeah. because I saw the fruits of it. Yeah. But I also saw the realities of it, too. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of down the middle because I see both sides of it. I had success for a time, but it didn't last. And then, um, you know, I had that experience, too, where I was working, you know, these uh, you know, I was putting crazy effort in to maybe work, you know, flip $4 on a shirt or, yeah. or maybe a, a Amazon book would make, you know, three bucks through its life or something like that. So you well, see that side of it. You know, I'll, I'll just say this as a comment, yeah. uh, John Michael, that if you gave me a choice of hiring someone with a Hope College business degree mm -hmm. or hiring a guy that dropped out of Hope College but had these kind of business experiences and can really relate to these things, I would take that guy over the uh, college degree every single day of the week. So part of it is, you know, not necessarily looking at it as, oh, wow, this worked, this didn't, I'm still doing this or whatever it is. It is who you became through that process. Right. And I would say you got your own degree of sorts yeah. in that effort. So yeah, that's a good kudos point. to you. Thank you, Steve. That's yeah. a good point. Sometimes, sometimes I look past that because yeah. I think about, oh, I wasted a lot of time doing this, but yeah, I definitely learned a lot along the way too. Yeah, so. now you can, a lot of this stuff that you see coming through is like, do this, do this, doesn't pass the sniff test for you because you're like, oh no, I know what doing that means. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I do, these Amazon publishers are still on Twitter and everything talking about how to get to $10,000 a month is the easiest life and they show them having a meal on some balcony right. and here's what I'm doing, you know? And right. it's like, okay, you know, yeah. not not like that all the time. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Yeah, you see these self-help gurus come in and, and you know what I would say too, Steve, just like, uh, you know, the Bible says to beware of false teachers. Mm. You see a lot of that in the financial world. They have a lot totally. of crossover. And I found the best uh, financial teachers later on were the guys that weren't trying to sell anything. They were yeah. just trying to offer advice. So like uh, you think about the Warren Buffetts and the Peter Lynch's. Yes. They had made their fortunes. They weren't trying to sell you a course. Yeah. They would say, you know, invest in the S&P 500 and reinvest your dividends over 20 years. And yeah, you'll, you'll be okay. Stop right. running like a rat on a treadmill. Exactly. Yeah. So you get kind of some good advice there, but yeah, you, then you see those guys and you're, you, you're right. They don't pass the sniff test and you, you start to see kind of what's phony. And if they're, if they're really doing that well, they're not going to try to sell you because they're going to be happy with their business. Yeah. They they're don't. so busy doing what they're doing that right. they don't, and they probably don't want to tell you everything they have to do anyway. Right. Um, uh, I'll also say too, just to add to that, you know, when you're 18 and 19, that sounds really attractive. Work a little bit, get a lot of money, do what you want. But you know, now that I'm 30, the idea of working hard towards something I love is a lot more attractive than just having oodles of money and you know nothing to work towards. So. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I'm I'm a big believer. I think I think it's I think once you find something you love and you work at it, it doesn't have to be even a business that you're passionate about, but it's something that really fits with your gift and with your talent, you really don't feel like you're working. There's challenges, there's days you don't wanna do it, but for the most part, you can look at it and go, you know, I don't look at Friday or Sunday night like, oh, Monday's coming, I just, can't, I just hate what I have to do. I don't think anyone should live like that. You might have to for a little bit, but you shouldn't long range. Right, yeah, and that's how I was uh, feeling too when I was doing, you know, my insurance sales and mortgage sales, I was feeling that way on, on Sunday night. And that's what led me to wanting to have this sort Explore. of freedom. But, uh -huh. um, you know, when you're, when you're 18 and 19, you don't necessarily understand the values of, of business and hard work, and you don't understand the motivation behind it because you went from having fun for 18 years to, you know, working in a corporate office. And, you know, maybe I wasn't ready for the jump at that time. And that's what, that's what led me towards entrepreneurship. But yeah, now that, now that I'm older, uh, the idea of working hard for a business or a you know a field of um, business that I like is is certainly more attractive than it was you know 10, 12 years ago. Well, that's great, and I would say just even up to this part of the story, John Michael, where I, you got fourteen hundred a month from um, you know your clothing flipping, and then you did got had you know eight and nine thousand dollar months with Amazon publishing, you have already put yourself in a category of people you know, separate yourself from many people on earth. Uh, so 
so congratulations. But I then when did you start? What did you move from the publishing to the trick shots? Was that the next thing? Yes, that was the next uh, entrepreneurial. Because okay. that's where journey. that's where you and I for oh, that I I I met, I was were, uh, well, you and I were talking and meeting and just having some great conversations during that transition period. So what got you onto the trick shots? So I uh, was working the different office jobs, really not happy with it. Mm -hmm. And there was a group on social media called Dude Perfect. And they were the epitome of what trick shot success looked like. And they were one of the few guys doing it th at that point. And uh, I was working these office jobs I didn't like. And I was, you know, maybe 22 at this point. And I was like, man, that is, that is way more fun than what I'm doing right now. I can yeah. totally do this. So then I started posting videos to YouTube, not getting any traction at all. So what was your first trick shot? It was uh, it was like a montage of ping pong trick shots. I was okay. doing it in like my backyard. Okay. And I had filmed it on the front facing camera of an iPhone to put on YouTube. So okay. I, I had like no... Uh, no equipment, idea, no nothing. Yeah, I had yeah. no idea what I was doing. So I, I remember those first shots, John. I yeah, do. Yeah. yeah and you, I was like, what? Like what? <laughs> I was like, I, I, I had no idea of this trick shot genre even. Yeah. And I remember there was one view, two views. Yeah. You know, and uh, so anyway, so continue. Yeah, yeah, you were there from the beginning. I was there from the beginning. You saw it all yeah. unfold. So yeah. um, there, I was getting no traction on YouTube. I'm, I'm seeing these dude perfect guys and I'm like, oh, you know, my videos are just as good as theirs. They're making millions. I'm, I haven't even made a cent yet. And so I started to realize that I needed to get... Uh, featured on someone else's YouTube to get exposure, to bring exposure to my channel because YouTube is so oversaturated with videos, the chances of you breaking through are very small. So a lot of times when people get their career in social media, it's because a bigger content creator featured them on their channel and, and then, then they, they get, start to yeah, get the get ball lightning rolling in a because bottle. of that. So I was having no success, but still very determined, very motivated, knew that I could make this happen if I just captured the audience. So one day I'm on Instagram and another guy who's in the trick shot field says, Hey, me and this other guy who are in the trick shot field are doing a charity golf tournament. And any one of my followers can join us, um, in this charity golf tournament, but the catch is you have to be the highest donator to the charity. So I said, okay, this is my chance. This is my chance. This is my chance to get in. So I said, hey, I'll donate $1,000 to the uh, charity if I can play this golf tournament with you guys. And I didn't hear anything for a couple of days. I figured, you know, it was golf. I figured there was some hotshot guy who yep. had 50000 he could donate, and they would have never picked me anyway. So a few days later, he goes, hey, this was the highest offer we got. Is this legitimate? And I, I said, yeah, yeah, I, I mean it. And he's like, all right, I'll, I'll uh, text you in the morning. So the next morning, he goes... Uh, the golf tournament's here in Atlantic City. Um, we need you here these dates and, uh, you know, fly out when you, when you can. So I bought the plane ticket that, that day. So you're investing in your business. Yeah. that's, that's Does anyone exactly. say you're crazy, John? Yes. Uh, uh, who the, said you're crazy? Well, I found out a lot uh, actually later that people were saying I was crazy. A long time. A long time <laughs> before that. So yeah. it actually wasn't until I had success that people started being like, hey, man, we were telling your parents to this talk guy's some sense into you. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? You know, yeah, this, this yeah. looks ridiculous. I thought you were crazy, John. Michael. Yeah, so. I, I was like, well, and, and I didn't know, dude, perfect. I didn't know any of that. Yeah. Because, you know, a few of my kids were like, I don't know, man, this guy's got a shot. You know, yeah. I'm like, what should he go out with? I mean, anyway. Yeah. So, so I, 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 my mom was like, you know, your aunts and uncles were saying yeah. that. What do you let, Get a real you job. Let do it? Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. So I, I'm glad I didn't hear it till later because maybe it would have discouraged <laughs> me. But also being naive to, they, they had a point too. Yeah. I'm not even. And, I but you even, had a job during this time, didn't you? John I, um, I'm trying to think. I here. think you had your, uh, you're selling, uh, you were selling uh, 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 beverages. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually um, picked up that job when the trick shots weren't catching. So okay. This was maybe right between yeah. Team Morgan and you're and single. I actually, I had a girlfriend at this point, okay. but even she was um, uh, a little weary of it because she's a lawyer. So she's real big on uh, education, education yeah. and not as big on entrepreneurship. And but she wants to go to the uh, lawyer circles and tell everyone how her right. uh, boyfriend is shooting uh, trick shots. Yes. And, and you know what? Just like my parents, she was patient with me too. And 
thankfully she loved me more than she hated the idea of me being an entrepreneur. So we, we, we pushed through that. But um, she was not happy with me going to Atlantic City um, to pursue this. And, um, and then meanwhile, other people in the background are whispering in my parents' ears, sure. why, why are you letting this kid do this? This yeah. is ridiculous. So uh, anyway, go to Atlantic City. These guys feature me on their YouTube channels. And so are these guys really cool then? Do they, they, they deliver on their promise? Super cool guys. Yeah. Um, nice Christian guys. Yeah. To, super wholesome. I met their families. Wow. We, we couldn't add a better. I was a terrible golfer. Yeah. Compared and who to are these guys, too. by the way? So um, the guy who initially made the invitation is a guy by the name of Josh Kelly. Okay. And he has his own uh, Instagram page dedicated to golf trick shots. Okay. And then there was another guy. Okay. And then there was another guy named Brody Smith, who was like the second biggest behind Dude Perfect and Trick Shots at okay. that time. So, um, they, you know, they post me on their Instagram stories. You know, we're golfing, having a good time at the charity tournament. And I was thinking, man, I got the two of the biggest guys in the game to post me, and I'm still not seeing the results um, like I thought I would. I thought it would be an immediate, you know, yes. new 100,000 followers or whatever it was. So I was um, a little disappointed and then I get home from the trip and I check my uh, direct messages and I see a message from TikTok, which is a company and they, they had not taken on at this point. So I didn't think much of it. They're this up and coming app trying to get creators and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, um, I'll just message them back, see what they want because they had the blue check mark. So sure. I, I thought they at least must be legitimate. And they're like, Hey, John, Michael, you know, we want trick shotters on our, platform would you please start posting some videos to our thing and i was still so committed to youtube at this point that i was like all right i'll, I'll appease this guy yeah. i'll do it and so i just uploaded one of my trick shots i already, had already filmed on youtube to tiktok and they're like that's nice but tiktok is through the phone we don't want something that was filmed on a camcorder we want something that was filmed on a cell phone and i'm like ah all right i'm just gonna make this guy happy i'll try one so I post it to TikTok. You recorded a new one. Recorded a new one on the phone alone. Okay. Posted it to TikTok. Forget about it. Check the phone maybe later that day, the next day, and it's got 12,000 views. And I'm going, whoa. What? I've been on YouTube for, what, six, nine months, and I've got nothing. And then in one day, I get 12,000 views. So I go, okay. And what do you, and and what what was the key to that, John Michael? Was it the content? Did they boost you? Yeah, I, I actually thought my trick shots were pretty good. Okay, and I thought I was worthy of more views than I was getting on okay. YouTube. Okay, and this was perfect because YouTube rewards more long form videos. Yep. maybe ten to twelve minutes. Yep. I was making fifteen second trick shots. Yeah, so this, this was, was like tailor made, perfect yeah. time, uh, right place, right time. Yeah, so the that video gets twelve thousand views. I go whoa. I just got thousands of more views than I ever got on YouTube in six months of effort with one video. I said, okay, I'm making a new trick shot every day on TikTok, you know, for however long I can do it. And so, so at this point, how long were you doing trick shots? Um, this was maybe a year or two at okay. this point. Okay. Or, or yeah, maybe or nine did, months at the least. Did you yeah. make any money? No, not a cent. Literally okay, not, not a, a cent. cent. Okay, not a cent. And so this is something that, uh, you know, just for those at home that are, you know, keeping score. 
here you are, you didn't make any money. Yeah. You invested in this event yeah. that it, if you came home and told someone how the event went, I have no new followers. I have no this, I have no that. I have yeah. invested this much money. I wasted a lot of time. Right. You know, I met these guys and the, even their, um, their uh, you know, endorsement of me right. and exposure of me didn't give me any lift. Yeah. And so it looks like on the surface, fail. Right. But here, here comes this message now. Yeah. And you're like, you could have just said, screw this message, tick tock, schmick schmack, I want to do this. Yeah. But all of a sudden you're like, you know what? Let me pivot. Mm -hmm. Let me do this. Right. So it doesn't always look, success doesn't always come the way we think it's going to come. Yeah. And it doesn't always look how, you, so you have to be open to what's happening here. So kudos to you for being like, okay, you know, my original plan was this, but I'm going this. Yes, yes, yeah. Thank you. I was running off pure motivation yeah. at that point. So I was able to get through. I do remember too, my mom, before I left for the trip, said to me, I think God got you, has you where he wants you right now. So I had a lot of comfort in that. That was I great. Remember, yeah, that, yeah. That, uh, that, I remember that really comforted me through the trip because yeah. it, was, it was all going downhill. Yeah. Uh, you know, n no success at all. So yeah, so I get the 12,000 views that night on TikTok. I say, every day I'm making a video. Uh, so you, you know, double down on until TikTok. I can't double down on TikTok. So I think eight months straight, I put up a new video every day. So that was maybe like 200 days of filming a new trick shot every day. I gained 300 something thousand followers and change. So maybe like 320,000 followers on TikTok. How quickly? In eight months. Wow. Yeah. So I gained the three. So you just see it clicking, 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 yeah. clicking. Right. And wow. so, and even then not a cent, 300,000 wow. followers, not a cent. Finally, um, Pepsi reaches out for a brand deal and, um, it still wasn't even all that, all that great. You know, it was certainly not enough to, they want you to work myself. in their, their cans and stuff in the, right. In they, your thing. They had me do an advertisement for Mountain Dew. So it was okay. a one video, one thing. Okay. So at this point I'm saying, man, I've got 300,000 followers every day for eight months and I've gotten one paycheck and it wasn't, you know, even enough to cover the mortgage or anything okay. like that. Yeah. So that's when I've gotten to beverage sales. I said, okay, this isn't, this isn't working. Yeah. I gave it my best. Yeah. You know, I, I made, I got 300,000 followers. I got one brand deal in eight months. It's not enough. So I kind of forgot about trick shots for maybe a year. So then didn't do a trick shot. I did. I kept maybe the pages up. Maybe I'd put okay. something up every month okay. or something like that. But you had a, you had a full-time job. You had to focus on that. You right. were doing it. All exactly. That. Okay. So then one day I'm at work and TikTok sends me a message. They said, Hey John, your account has this many followers. You've gotten this many views in the last month. The page was still bringing in web traffic. Mm -hmm. We're going to put you in our, uh, partner paid program. So we're going to pay you based on how many views you get. I was like, finally, this is yeah. what I was waiting for yeah. the whole time. This is what yeah. I was trying to do on YouTube all that time. So TikTok puts me in their program. I'm back in every day. Uh, and so you, you're working your job working and job. you're doing trick shots. Now. Yes. I wow. was, I, there was some nights I forgot to eat, eat dinner. I was wow. so, and um, so how long is so typical average trick shot. I know people love to hear how long yeah. these take, but average trick shot this is not like make a shot and go back it's yeah. like some of them take hours and hours. i mean the way i i, yeah. I see the, the elaborate shots right yeah so i would work an eight hour day at the beverage sales and maybe film four hours that night when i wow. got home so and you have a girlfriend you have i mean you have yeah. all this different and stuff we're, we're yeah we're engaged at this okay, or, we're engaged. Or, or close to it yeah we're just okay. about getting engaged okay. at this point so um but you know i had the i had the beverage sales we were i was able to support um you know, the life we were trying to build and all that. And so, um, you know, I'm getting home filming four hours a night, uh, you know, to start bringing in this revenue that I had already worked so hard for. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, bringing in a little bit of money, just, it's kind of more like a side gig at that yeah. point, uh, yeah. maybe some pocket change. And on what's, top of you know, money. John Michael at this point, what's driving you? The potential of what it could be. Okay. Because I said, you know, I put a year or two into this, eight months on TikTok alone, where I filmed every day. Um, finally, they're going to reward me for those efforts. I need to double down on this and um, see see how high I can take this thing. Yep. And um, that message from TikTok saying, "Hey, we're going to pay you for your views," was the start of the next four years, which were just incredible. So. Um, TikTok starts paying these creators. TikTok is just blowing up at this point. I mean, they're. So you catched a TikTok wave. I caught a wave. 
which led to even bigger waves after that. So yeah. their TikTok's compounding at this point. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube are starting to say, oh man, this- TikTok's kicking our butt. We right. need to do something. We need to do something yeah. about it. So um, at this point, a couple other people had gotten into the trick shot game like I had been doing and we formed a little group chat. It was like me and two other guys. And one of the guys goes, hey guys, uh, Snapchat has uh, a new incentive where they're paying out a million dollars a day for TikTok type videos. Um, and they're going to be paying out creators who grab the biggest market share for the day. They're half of that pie, whatever it is, wow. so a million a day. So um, I'm now I'm posting on TikTok every day, posting on Snapchat every the day. The same videos. Um, yeah, same videos. Okay. And uh, in their original format, so to all these different platforms. So at this point, it's just TikTok and Snapchat that are paying. Mm. So Snapchat messages me, hey, one of your videos qualified for payment. Um, we're, we're going to get back to you in a few weeks, let you know what that amount is. So, okay, you know, didn't think much of it. Sounds good. Maybe yeah. it's 40 cents. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, and, and, and at this point, what are you, uh, what are you making from TikTok? Um, you know, maybe a few thousand I'd made for, in a few months. So okay. maybe like a thousand a month. Okay. Maybe even 500, somewhere okay. in that range. But that still feels good, right? Yeah. From nothing to, right. it's like, hey, yeah. you know. Right, yeah, yeah, this is worth something. Yeah, so worth something. Yeah, I've got the job. Build a little I've bit got, of annuity. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I could take, uh, we can go to maybe some nice dinners with yeah. the money, something like yeah. that. So that was cool, you know, maybe, maybe on pace to make like $12,000 that year, maybe from TikTok revenue, nothing mm -hmm. special. So, uh, so Snapchat, you know, messages me, hey, you're due, you, you earned a, a paycheck from us, whatever. Um, finally, that a message comes through, hey, congratulations, you qualified for payment this day. Um, you're um, entitled to one hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars. And so I go, oh, OK, they made an yeah. accounting error. Yeah. Uh, this is they mean fifteen dollars yeah, and ninety cents. Exactly. They mean one hundred and fifty nine dollars. Right. They mean something like that. Somebody missed a decimal. Yeah, is what I yeah, thought. So yeah. I didn't even get excited. I was like, "Well, they're, who's going to pay me one hundred and fifty nine thousand yeah. dollars?" Yeah. So one of the buddies I had started the group chat with goes, "John, did you get the message from Snapchat today?" I go, "Yeah, yeah." Did you? He goes, "Yeah, I got it." He goes, "What was your amount?" I said, <laughs> "I said one hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars." He goes, "Dude." I said, I said, but they made an accounting error. He goes, dude, no, they didn't. He, I said, why? What's yours? He goes, it's thirteen thousand dollars. And I said, oh wow, wow. We, we grabbed the share because they just started the program. People didn't know about this yeah. yet. So him and I and the other guy in the group chat spent that entire year just trying to grab this pie every day. Wow. And the pie got smaller and smaller as the year went on because more people found out about this. And so how, from the day that they told you you're going to get it, how yeah. much, how quickly did you get it? Um, I got it about a month or two later. Wow. So yeah, they, okay. did, they, they had to do it in two different deposits. Like did you, and were you like, hey, is, I mean, were you, did you like go back to them and go, this is a mistake or you just kind of lay low? I just laid low. I said, I'm not going to count anything until this is in my bank account. Okay. And the, uh, they couldn't even give it to me all at once because they, they're not allowed to give you more than $100,000 at a time. Wow. So they they deposited like 99000 the first time and then the other 60000 What was it like time. that money hitting your bank account? Oh, that, that Did was, you feel like just yeah. like the guy riding on the white horse? Oh, it was, it was the, that was one of the best days. <laughs> so I, awesome. I told my fiance, hey, we got the money for the wedding. Yeah. Pick whatever venue you want. Nice. Like we're going to have it. Yeah. Did you do like a Royal wedding in England when oh, you ride was, right down the, uh, yeah, it was cool. We had the bells and whistles. We went to, That's great. Uh, we got married in Scottsdale, Arizona. Nice. Flew all our, uh, you know, family out yeah. there and had this, uh, beautiful, uh, wedding in the mountains with wow. this Venmo or wow. the, this venue, uh, you know, in the desert. It was beautiful. Wow. So good for you. That was cool. That was a, that's a, that's an awesome Amazing. thing to be able to tell your fiance. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna have our wedding, your dream wedding, yeah. yeah. So that was really cool, um, and we were having fun. You know, I was filming these videos. It didn't require as much of my time now. It had been, been built up, so we were going to, you know, Los Angeles for the weekend, or Scottsdale for the weekend, or you know, driving up to Michigan for the weekend. You know, and all, all these sorts of fun stuff while, you know, filming all these videos. So. So you're reaping some of the fruits of right. a, a long. I mean, from the book sales yeah. to the clothing hustle to you know all this right. and here you are now finally like wow that must have been such a great feeling John right Michael. and that was that was cool yeah, and that's the culmination what, of kind of just all that effort yes it was you know what's funny when i told my brothers they both said 
all the hard work paid off. It finally came through. Good for so you. I knew you had it in you. Yeah, you were a natural right. and entrepreneur. It, what brilliant. Right. There, there was, yeah, and that's when I started hearing about the, you know. We the, thought you were nuts. Yeah, the different people yeah. whispering in yeah. my parents' ears, why are you letting them do this? And yeah. to my parents' credit, they never told me that until that point. They let me ride the wave and learn that on no, my I own. Think, so. I, think, uh, I think people respect, you know, same thing, same feeling I had, John Michael, which was, Man, the guy's a smart guy. I mean, he probably knows something I don't know about this. Like, man, am I, you know, it's just amazing, you know. So anyway, mm -hmm. I was more watching to see what would happen yeah. than thinking this is crazy. You right. know what I mean? So yeah. anyway, all right. So, so you started grabbing the Snapchat pie. Right. Snapchat pie that year, that was my best year in trick shots. That was, I think, 2021. Okay. And the, um, the big check, that biggest one I got, that 159 uh, was in January, so it was a good. It was the beginning of right. the program. It was a be exactly so. Okay. Um, so yeah, we went uh, those those three guys and I, or two guys and I, spent that year, um, you know, diving into uh, Snapchat and getting the most out of that. And, well. and at that time, then also not just Snapchat, but then Facebook laid money on the table. They were all doing this kind of thing to get everyone to create content. Exactly. So Snapchat got oversaturated. Okay. Uh, the pie slice was much smaller then. Yeah. So then Facebook comes out and says, oh, we got to do something now. So Facebook makes a program where they, um, depending on how many views you can get, you can make up to $35,000 a month. Um, th that's what they'll cap you at. So you have free reign until 35000 a month. So I started doing pretty good in that program. And uh, for the next two years, I was riding that wave. So okay. that was cool. And, um, and during that period of time when you're making these videos and he's making these trick shots and all this, what what kept you in the game? Like what was what was key? is there is there was an element of fun for the trick shot? Was it an element of fun, uh, trying to hustle the system? Yeah. Was it just like trying to figure? It's like the Rubik's cube. You just keep going at it to yeah. see what can I get. That's a good question, Steve, yeah. because it did shift. Um, at first, I was driven purely by motivation by building this business, what it could could be. I had so much fun making the trick shots, so much fun doing the editing, you know, so much fun building this thing up, and then. Um, at a certain point, um, that went away, and um, one second, let's break yeah. this. I get it. Well, how are you? Hey, great. How are yeah, you? Uh, Steve. Steve. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Yep. Okay, picking it up, I had so much fun. Yeah, so I, I had a lot of fun making the uh, the videos in the first place and building the business. That part of the motivation went away. I became purely motivated by the uh, financial reward. So filming the trick shots became a task. At this point, I'm in my mid-20s. So now trick shots aren't as cool as they were when I was 22. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they started to become repetitive, right? Yeah. You're trying to figure out how do I, how exactly. do, what do I do? Right. Then it became know. figuring about, okay, what... What video is going to get this app to push uh, me out to more people? You know, what kind of video do I have to do to get into the algorithm and that sort of stuff? And my wife and I were, you know, relying on this money. So it wasn't like I was going to try to do anything else at that point or start a new career. So I was just pretty much towards the later years doing it um, for financial reward. The love of the trick shots had kind of dwindled after, you know, I had matured a little bit. Okay. And, uh, you know, I'd start to get into my mid and late twenties at that point. So yeah, there was a, a definite shift in motivation. It became all about the, the money rather than about the, the enjoyment of building a business and filming the trick shots themselves. Yeah. Okay. And so then at what point did you say this, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this full time. Yeah. You know, um, well, my wife, uh, went to law school during this period Okay. and, um, a few other things happened, but I started really developing an interest in law. And meanwhile, um, I think the app started to realize that they could pay the creators a lot less. The dust had kind of settled from TikTok's rise. TikTok found their place. Facebook found their place. Snapchat found their place. So th they realized they didn't have to pay guys like me $30,000 a they month got anymore. Their, they got their market. Right, yeah. exactly. So, um, and you know, there's such a desire for people to be content creators. Um, that they could pay a lot of these guys pennies and those guys would be fine with it because the fame of being on social media was enough motivation for them. So the paychecks really started to dwindle 
um, you know, it's it, even today, it's still a, a part time job. I still mm -hmm. I still have it and and all that sort of stuff. But um, while that was all happening, I started to feel like law was really really wanted to be that was mm -hmm. more stimulating to me at that point. That was a new endeavor to work towards. Uh, just like when, you know, I'd started trick shots, it was something to build. That's kind of where I started to see myself with law. And so uh, that's when it kind of shifted. But the thing I realized was my eBay business, flipping clothes, my Amazon business, publishing books, and my trick shot business, um, they were all limited time things. None of them, the longest one that lasted was trick shots. And that was maybe four or five years of full-time income. So I was, I started to get a little bit more pessimistic about being an entrepreneur and started to see everyone's point when I was 22 and they were saying, you need to finish your degree. I, I was like, oh, you know, those people actually had a good point. This, mm -hmm. there's, a lot, there's a lot to that. So um, that's kind of where I'm at with the business right now. I, I have it as um, a side income. You know, we use it to pay some of our bills and stuff like that. But I don't think it'll ever be what it was mm -hmm. when Snapchat and Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and YouTube were all fighting for their share of who's going to get the people on their apps. So uh, it, w it was a fun run. I, I learned a lot, but um, I don't know if I'll be doing it, you know, three, four years from now even. So, well, you know, it's interesting. Again, I'll lean back on that. I think that, that it's really powerful uh, that you were able to, in each of those scenarios, begin, learn, and then move the needle to the point where you got the result. And I think no matter what you do, you know, in terms of if oh, you're going to go back and get a job, like that would be the thing. If I'm an entrepreneur hiring you, I would look at it and go, this is a guy that can figure things out and get a result. Right. Whatever the result is, that, and that, and that becomes more your brand, right? You know, is that I'm a person that can navigate all this stuff, right? You know, come in and get a result, right? You know what I mean? And yes. get us to where we want to go, meet the goal. Sure. So, and I won't give up until I do. Yeah, definitely. It's a good, uh, and I add, and actually you have a lot of self-awareness to not stick with something when the cheese is moved, right. you're not still coming there looking for the cheese anymore. You're like, I recognize when this well is drying up and right. I'm not just going to beat this dead horse until I'm a hundred years old. Yep. That's, that's exactly it. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of fun while it, w it lasted. If yeah. I could, if I could tell myself when I started making the full-time money from it was to, to understand that it was a li limited time thing and to be, uh, you know, more frugal with some of those blessings and stuff like that. But, uh, but it, you're right. It, it certainly made me more marketable to jobs because I can point them to one of my pages and say, look, I built a million followers on, uh, you know, JM trick shots page. And I produced, um, you know, over bill, uh, you know, 3 billion views over the course of the, um, you know, over the course of the business. And, uh, you know, I brought in these kind of revenues, um, you know, over these kind of years. So they, they, you're right. It makes you more marketable because people see that you can perform. And you can get results. So, um, and so if I'm hearing you right, John Michael, what social media is turning into is less about make cool content and, and get rich. It is about if you want to monetize this, you have to be able to or, or, um, offer value beyond the viewership. You know, so in other words, there's some kind of skill, some way that you need to parlay your views into something that's going to be, you know, the entrepreneurial is maybe the, the next step or the next layer right. of exposure on social media. Right. Yeah. Where, where I think um, it'll be going. I mean, I think these social media businesses are going to keep growing. If you look at Google and Facebook and um, you know YouTube, and you look at their revenues over the years; they just compound keep, and yeah, double every exploding. three, four yeah. years. So I think social media is going to get more popular, and maybe some more opportunities will will arise because of that. But um, you know, I think you're going to see more people trying to become content creators. Um, I think the content will get better because people are going to have to be more innovative. But at least for me personally, I don't see it as something uh, I, I want to do in the long run. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I think it's in, uh, you know, Steve, the, uh, first Thessalonians where, where Paul writes to live a quiet life kind of a thing mm -hmm. that's become so much more attractive to me as I've, uh, become older. Oh, that's cool. And so, um, but I think social media is going to 
keep getting bigger. I don't know if the paychecks for creators will be. I think, I will say, I think for people that are online personalities, that money will always be there because brands will always need them and their followers will always be devoted to them. For me, I was remembered for the shots I did, not the personality that I put out there. So um, I, I find actors, people that do skits and stuff like that, they do pretty well because brands want to advertise through them yeah. and their followers are devoted to them because they fall in love with their personality. When I show somebody my page, they never recognize me. They'll say, oh, I've seen one of your shots before or something like that. So your followers aren't as loyal when you're a trick shot guy, mm -hmm. but when you're an online personality, um, they're more loyal. So I don't want to discourage people saying that there's no opportunity in social media because if that's what you want to do, you should go for it. Yeah. But um, that's where I see it headed is that um, the people that will be able to make a full-time living from it are the personalities rather than the uh, for the guys like me who were remembered for what they did but not by their personality. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Um, good insights. So now, looking forward, you have your um, you're you're going to finish up your degree at Colorado State yep. State University. Uh -huh. And you'll have that wrapped up by the end of the year. Right. And you're also looking to uh, uh, get your law degree. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's so really I'm, exciting. It is. Yeah. I'm currently studying for the LSAT. Mm -hmm. So I take that in November and that's uh, been taking up a lot of my time. That's, mm -hmm. that's like the ACT for college. Mm -hmm. That's what the LSAT is to law school. So you want a good score on that. That determines your scholarships and what schools you get into and all that sort of stuff. So that's where my attention's been. That's where my motivations, Ben. Um, it's going to be an investment because it takes three to four years to even get through law school. Um, but I'm looking at the long run here. Uh, that was something I learned from my businesses. You know, I, I built all these short run type businesses, but with a, going into the legal field, you're, you're really building something for 20, 30, 40 years. So that's where, that's where my uh, motivation is right now. Yeah. yeah. So John Michael, I think I want to applaud you for number one, a accomplishing so much to the point that you're 30. So bravo. And I would say that, that you, you, I see a pattern of that you have a passion, you really go all in, but when you see that passion wane mm -hmm. for whatever reasons, you have the awareness then to, to pivot. So what is that? So how do you, how, what's your process for that? Yeah, I, I think that's just reacting to life more so. So okay. um, for tr the trick shots, for example, when I was 22, it seemed like the coolest job in the world. Now that I'm a dad, uh, you know, I want to be a good example to my daughters and, mm -hmm. you know, I want them to see me, uh, you know, get my degree and, uh, you know, further my education and, you know, get into a respectable field and see their dad. Uh, you know, go off to work every day rather than, you know, throwing ping pong balls around the family room and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so that's just kind of, uh, the circumstances of life leading yeah. you to different paths. Okay, yeah. great. So, uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, maybe in wrapping this up and then we're going to do a, uh, we'll record, a, a, sh a just miniature little trick shot. Yeah. Um, goals. Um, are you like a formal goal seller writing them down actually? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, um, I, I don't know as, if I go as far as uh, writing them down, but I, but I certainly have what I want to do in mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not as money driven as I was when I was in my 20s. Obviously, you need it to support a family, but that's not my goal. Um, before it was to, you know, get rich and do whatever I wanted with my time. But now it's to um, build a career and provide for my family and do something that I, that I uh, like and... Uh, Sorry, I'm losing my, my train of no, uh, no problem. thought here. But uh, what was your question goals. again, Steve? Oh, we're goals. About yes. Goals. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I have uh, what I want to do in mind. Um, I, I could maybe be more intentional about you know writing them down and sure. stuff like that. But yeah, I'm not saying um, you should. But you yeah. are you are a person that sets a goal. Right. It looks like, and maybe it's just you know Michael Jordan said I never right. wrote anything down. I just knew kind of what I wanted. Yeah. and Got it and reminded myself of it often just through right. my mind. Yeah, know? I will say I have the same mindset I had. Um, uh, you know, obtaining my, uh, you know, law degree as I did when I went into trick shots, like I won't, you know, I won't rest until I get, it. I get the results kind of a thing. So that's where I'm at right now. Very excited, you know, anxious about, you know, getting that done. Okay. And let's talk about, um, examples, mentors in your life or whatever it is. How important is that for you or where do you get those from? Uh, it's, that's huge. Um, I, I think, uh, mentors were, a. uh, 
certainly a key element to um, what I accomplished. You're um, a curious guy, you know. Yeah. I noticed that in just our discussion relationship that you ask a lot of questions and you listen a lot. So I yeah. think you're a, you're a good learner that way. You're aware. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Um, I never sought out a mentor. I always found them. Mm-hmm. You you were that for me in uh, my spiritual walk, and mm. that, that that could we could do a whole podcast on that. Sure. Um, but uh, you know, um, I will say the mentors that. Um, were most beneficial to me were also the ones that were most patient with me. Mm. So um, I think that's a good uh, piece of advice for anyone listening that when you're uh, helping someone along the way, don't get frustrated by their uh, inability to see what you see. Mm-hmm. Um, just just walk beside them till they figure it out because they will. Um, you know, they'll eventually understand it after, you know, life throws curveballs at them and they get a little bit more uh, exposure to reality and stuff like that. But um, yeah, you know, uh, I had Keith, obviously, who taught mm-hmm. me a lot about business. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had examples of uh, people online who would give you uh, advice mm-hmm. and uh, stuff like that. Um, people at different jobs at work. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, I had a, uh, I had a uh, regional manager at my beverage sales uh, uh, job, and he gave me one of the greatest pieces of advice I ever had. He said, uh, the best thing you can be in any situation is prepared. And so that's mm. a motto I always stick with. Whatever I go into, be prepared. Don't show up um, without a plan. So mm. that's great. Um, I yeah. love that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, mentors were, yeah, were definitely a factor in it. Yeah. Well, all right, John, Michael, we can go on and on, and maybe yeah. we will have a spiritual podcast. But um, I, I, I will say that now your status is you're married, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you have a daughter. Yep. And then you have another daughter on the way. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And that's really exciting. Yes. Yeah. It- it is. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And what's that like being a dad? It's, it's the best experience I've ever had. You, mm-hmm. uh, everyone tells you, um, you don't know how much you'll love your child till you meet them. And that's so true. Just, uh, mm. when she wakes up in, in her crib in the morning and says, da da, that's like the, you know, the best part of my day. So yeah, that's really fun. Love being a dad. Um, it really makes you mature in a lot of ways because you realize you have to be a, a, an example to, to someone you're mm-hmm. responsible for someone. Um, you know, you're responsible for uh, providing uh, the necessities they need, uh, mm-hmm. whether, you know, through education and food and a house and all that stuff. So it makes you grow up um, quite a bit. And uh, yeah, it's, it's the most, uh, you know, joyful experience I've had in 30 years. That's for sure. And let's just talk just for a minute as we close, uh, John Michael, about your faith. You know, what was the shift for you? What was the open? Is it, would you think, do you, would you say it was just timing or would you say uh, something else? That that was uh, John uh, three three uh, when Jesus said, "Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of mm. God." So uh, people always say, um, "Oh, uh, like when did you decide to become religious?" And I was like, "It wasn't me. It, it, yeah. I didn't choose anything. God chose me." Yeah. So uh, it was March tenth, twenty. Uh, 19, God gave me his Holy Spirit. That's what it was. Yeah. So always understood the father and the son, you know, of the Trinity, but never understood the Holy Spirit. And knew the stories. Right. Knew the stories. um, New Christians. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even when I I was in, uh, you know, going to youth groups and stuff like that, you would uh, hear the story of Jesus being crucified. And, and, you know, they'd say, oh, well, he died for you. And it's like, oh, well, I I didn't ask him to, you know, I don't don't really get it. Nice of him. Right. Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, but then, you know, when you're born again of the, the Holy Spirit, you understand how desperately you need your Savior mm. and then how much you depend on him. So mm. that was that was being reborn, uh, you know, born again. Mm. That was all the work of the Holy Spirit. It mm. wasn't me at all. I can't take any credit for um, becoming a, a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Um, I give all the credit to him because it's like Psalm 103 says, uh, the Lord is uh, patient and, and slow to anger. That's how he's been with me because mm. I, I've I've made a million mistakes even after I've become a Christian. Yeah, and he still wants me. So, um, but but yeah, the answer to that question is when it all changed for me was when God revealed Himself to me. Wow. Yes. You know, I liken it to you know you can put light bulbs in a room or in a box together and rub them all together and all that, but they're never going to light up. But as soon as you screw it in, it lights up, and it's almost like when the connection is made you shine. And when yeah. the connection is not made, you had all the potential for shining, 
but never did, you know, and it's, a, it, there's a mystery to it and a curiosity. And sometimes we take credit for it. And I think on the other side, we'll realize probably how it all really works, you yeah, know, right. because of the mystery of it. And because you probably heard a lot more logical explanations of it before March of 2019 right. and never grabbed onto it. So it isn't an intellectual thing. It is a total connection. The same thing happened with me where one day, you know, what, you know, you know, something just clicked on. It was like, it was impossible to shut it down. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? As opposed to, I believe this because I heard the intellectual argument and then all of a sudden it's like, then I hear a better argument and I'm over here and I hit a bre Right. No, you know, I just, you just keep shining because you make the connection. And it's not to say there's not a depth in your relationship with God that has you seeing him differently as you walk closer and closer with him. Because I think that that's absolutely true. And so in some ways I hold on to all of my uh, beliefs loosely giving God enough room yeah. to expand my, my knowledge of him, you know? Yeah. So that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. My own, my own uh, stubbornness on mm -hmm. things has definitely gotten in my way. So that's a good attitude yeah. To, yeah. to be open to it, that. Yeah. So anyway, you know, it says, uh, there's a saying that says, um, everything in the Bible is true, but not all truth is in the Bible. You know, so in other words, I, I want to leave God uh, room to reveal new truths yeah. and new layers of truth. So anyway, John Michael, it's been a pleasure. I want to thank you yeah. for sharing time. I think that anyone who is, uh, a, any, any person who has thought about beginning a business or interested in social media or interested in the process of success mm -hmm. has heard a lot, if they would listen closely, a lot of great nuggets of um, how intentionality and stick to and perseverance and um, pivoting and, you know, constant failure. You know, uh, Thomas Edison said, I figured out 10,000 ways that it didn't work. Yeah. And then the 10,000 one, it did work right. and a light bulb turned on. So I think that you went through that process uh, scores of time here with, uh, with all of your online uh you know, marketing. So yeah. kudos to you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, consistency. I, I would, uh, leave as, as parting ad advice. We talked about this the other day, Bruce Lee said, I don't fear the man who practices 10,000 kicks in a day. I fear the man who practices one kick for 10,000 days. Ooh. Um, so consistency is, uh, was, uh, the pillar of, uh, the success for trick shots and consistency compounds. So awesome. yeah, yeah. Stay consistent. If you're yeah, looking to be an entrepreneur, don't give up even on the tough days. That's that's when it counts the most. Yeah, yeah and uh, John Michael, I know I asked you about this before, but I, I think you have a lot to share people who want to build their social media presence. Yeah, and so uh, that might be something that you're we'll talk about down the road. You know? Yeah, yeah, could definitely considered coaching. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that I, if someone wants to get into social media, I could definitely give them a lot of advice. That's for sure. Great. Yeah. Okay. Signing off, people, not titles. Stay tuned for the uh, trick shot that we're going to have, and then we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening to the People Not Titles podcast. We are proudly sponsored by Land Trust Title Services. If you enjoyed the podcast, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and we'd love it if you'd share our podcast with your friends. Thanks a lot.